What's going on, Will Freeman, RevolutionaryLifestyleDesign.com, talking to you today about why you're not anti-fragile and what to do about it. The term anti-fragile comes from the book by Nicholas Nassim Taleb, if I'm saying that right, um, on becoming anti-fragile, uh, becoming strong, becoming resistant to things. It's something uh, I was hearing and have been hearing a lot about within my space, the men's self-improvement space. Um, I've also been seeing a lot of those same guys get themselves banned from social media, get themselves banned from Amazon, get themselves banned from countries, um, even to the point where PayPal and, and other credit card services are not messing with those guys anymore. And that, guys, is just the beginning, okay? This is a trend that's only going to continue in the future. Um, and... The reality is you need those platforms to be able to do business, um, you know, especially when you're selling stuff online. If you're not online, you're fucking up, okay? I don't care what business it's in. You know, I talk about high ticket service business, real estate, insurance, personal training, any one of those is six. If you want to take it to the guru level um, by going online, getting the channel, getting the advertising, all that, you can do seven figures in all those businesses. That's my opinion. List of 31 six figure businesses on my site. Uh, you can also search for it on the YouTube channel. And I think leveraging online, uh, both organic content marketing, like I do, as well as advertising, which I'm starting to do is absolutely crucial. Um, it's so much easier. The game is, is just so much more evolved and you know, you're going to need Google for that. Of all the platforms, pretty much 99% of my traffic com comes from either Google search on my website or these YouTube videos. Uh, everything else is pay for play. If you haven't noticed, I took a razor to my site recently. I cut off LinkedIn. I cut off Twitter. That's a waste of time. I also cut off some of the edgier uh, content that I used to post on sex and dating, partially because um, you know my values have changed to a degree. I mean, I still stand by um, a lot of what I wrote, but I recognize, you know, what we're searching for is love and happiness and, you know, having deeper bonding, bonding, love making style and, and deeper relationships with women. Um, something I'm going to promote more, although if you want to be young and go have your fun, that's, that's all good. Um, but, you know, that's, that's more with where I'm aligned now when I truly look into what makes me happy and what has made me happy and what I want to be promoting. Um, but, you know, the reality is in, in this world, you're not anti-fragile, okay? And a lot of the guys who've been promoting that meme or, or that sort of type of thought leadership um, have been doing you a disservice and, they, and they're doing them to set themselves a disservice. And like I said, this is, this is the beginning um, and we're not just talking about your social media and your business platforms. We're talking about, um, first of all, the human organism is not anti-fragile. I mean, you're liable to car accidents. You're liable to colds and sickness. Uh, cancer kills 25% of people. Heart disease kills another 25% of people. Okay. Um, you're very much human. You're more human than you would want to believe. I'm more human than I wish I could be. I wish I could just you know, do enough Tony Robbins to be in a totally positive head stream all the time. But the reality is like, I feel like 90% of where I'm feeling mentally is coming from how I'm feeling physically. And with the end game of like, I want to be in that state of bliss and love as much as humanly possible. I feel like 90% of that's physical. We're talking about sleep. We're talking about diet. We're talking about not ejaculating. We're talking about having, um, Caretza style bonding, lovemaking and, and, you know, good relationships with the women or, or the couple of women that you're dating. We're also talking about having an inspirational um, vision for your life and being able to do what you love, which I'm working on delegating and outsourcing pretty much everything that I hate. Um, that's really what I'm looking for. But, but to be able to have all that, the human organism needs to be healthy. If you don't believe me, just see what your state's like when, you, when you've got food poisoning, you know? You're on the floor for, for two days straight on, on the bathroom floor, passed out from sickness. You can't work. Um, you know, you can't earn money. You couldn't defend yourself in a fight situation. Okay. So the human body is not anti-fragile. 
okay? It is, it is very susceptible to the environment, to your diet, the lack of sleep, all these things. And, you know, if there's one um, mindset shift that I've had, I was, I was telling you guys is wealth, number one, when you're young, health, number two, as you get older, but health's got to be number one across the board, for sure. Uh, secondly, I'd like to think that the vast majority of guys, if, if it came down to a one-on-one survival type of fight situation, someone's attacking me hand to hand, I'm going to take most guys, but two on one, I'm probably done. Uh, train fighter, I'm done. Guy's got a knife. I'm done. Guy's got a gun. You know, 99% of the, the time I'm done. Um, so, so you're not anti-fragile in terms of, of physical violence, which is why it's so important. So first you're taking care of your, your health of, of your organism, but you're also taking care of the environment of your, of your physical vehicle. And, you know, if you don't believe me, go watch the, uh, Wes Watson, um, prison channel on YouTube to see what it's like living in that environment 24 seven or, you know, because he was selling drugs on the outside to see what got him in, into prison in the first place. He was involving himself in all types of altercations with, with violence. Um, you need to avoid violence like the plague. Uh, and that means avoiding violent people. And that's getting yourself 99% of the time. It's, it's going to be getting yourself out of poor environments. Okay. You know, anytime I've had troubles in the past, it's like you're walking down the wrong neighborhood. Um, you're walking down downtown at home or, you know, in a big city at night, which is not safe. I don't care what big city it is. I lived in Toronto, the quote, safe, big city. And I felt safer in, in, you know, in Thailand, in, in what quote, third world country. I never saw sketchy people in, in Chiang Mai where I lived. Even Bangkok was safer than, than I felt safer than in Toronto. Um, you know, not, not going to bars where people fight, um, you know, not going to nightclubs, you know, where there's altercations all the time, basically just only going to either nice venues and living in a nice neighborhood. If you can't afford a nice neighborhood, at least get into, you know, a studio in kind of a middle class deal. Um, yes, you can get robbed. Yes, you can get attacked anywhere, but the odds are so low when, when you don't have a violent lifestyle and you're living in, um, you know, places that are nice, even if it's a cheap apartment, uh, you know, whatever you have to pay, if you're in an unsafe living situation, you've got to get out of there and you've got to remove yourself from all types of negative people who, who are prone to violence. Um, and, uh, venues, you know, I've, I've never had a problem in an upscale venue in a nice restaurant. I've never seen an altercation, um, Aside from like nightclubs, even upscale nightclubs can, you know, sometimes things pop off. But that's one thing you don't think about too much when you're young, but it's there and you'll see it as you get older. You know, you'll hear about things that happen to people. So you've got to protect your uh, physical environment. That also means um, inclusive of, you know, the... the um, you know, not, not involving yourself in situations where, um, the police are going to get involved, absolutely doing whatever you can to, to minimize that. Um, because you, you'll see real quick how, how not anti-fragile you are, you know, with, with four of those guys, the goon squads coming in, knocking on your door. Okay. There's nothing you can do. Um, so you don't want to be involved in those situations whatsoever. Okay. So the first area, you know, that, that you're not anti-fragile is is the health area and that has to be protected and nurtured, you know, in the same way that the same care and attention you would give to a small child, because, you know, that's your ticket to play the game of life is your health. The second area is, um, you know, the, the financial area and, you know, Peter Thiel got, got in a lot of trouble because he said single digit um, millionaires can't afford the legal system in America. And, you know, for the most part, he's right, um, which is why you want to stay out of lawsuits altogether. You want to minimize the probability of you getting involved in a lawsuit, which means 
you know, being ethical and, and, you know, doing your best to treat people well. Um, it might also involve, even if you're wrongfully being sued, to settle with the guy. Even if you, you know, you've got to bite your tongue to do it. Um, I was watching a video from Greg Cardone. He's talking about, you know, he was in a lawsuit for two years. This was maybe 15 years ago when he didn't have the money he does now. And everyone was telling him to settle, but his ego got in the way. And he said he should have just settled with the guy, even though the guy was wrong and he was a criminal and he was attacking him. He would have made so much more money um, if he just settled and, and, and got rid of the guy. And I think if you get big enough, you're going to get sued. But then, you know, at that point, you know, if you're at Grant Cardone level where he is now, um, you know, he can afford the lawsuits. He can afford to get someone on it. But until you're at that point, you, you want to do whatever you can to, to um, minimize the probabilities of that happening. And the less money you have in your bank account, the less money you have coming into your business. I mean, I think whatever you guys should aim for at the first level of financial freedom is six figures coming in in the business and six figures in the bank account to where you feel like, hey, you know, my, I'm, I'm, I'm out of survival at this point. Like, um, you know, now I can start to really throw this money into, into thriving, you know. I'm not, I've proven to myself that I can generate income. I've proven to myself that I can save income, that I have a discipline, that I have a budget. And now I can start throwing this money back into the business and, and really focusing, leveling up from surviving to thriving. Um, because money, money is, is um, you know, one of, one of the three major areas in, in, in terms of being able to develop some anti-fragility. You know, you're, you're always going to be fragile when, you, when you've got two grand in the bank, man. Um, you know, you're one step away from being homeless. You, you lose your job. You know, if you didn't have parents to stay with or whatever, or, or somebody who loves you, you know, you're, you're very close to being on the street. Um, so you've got to get your savings up. You've got to make financial freedom a priority. 99% of people don't. That's why they don't save. That's why they go into debt. That's why they, because they love the consumables more than they actually love um, the freedom and being able to build some anti-fragility into your life. So so the, the physical health is number one. Um, the, the money is number two. And then the actual power is number three. Now, to a degree, that kind of relates to physical health in the sense of I was saying, you know, avoiding fights, avoiding police, um, you know, if you have actual real world power, I'm not talking about you're a blogger talking about power. You know, you're one of these men's bloggers talking about how powerful you are. I'm talking about like real world power, you know, like, like you're in the government, um, like you run, you know, Blackwater, one of those mercenary companies, like, like you're a general type of deal. Okay. Then you've got some real power. You've got some some killers around you protecting you. You've got some escorts, uh, you know, guys escorting you with, with guns in that fucking, like, ice grill 24-7. Um, and you've got the ability to use that power on, on other people. But here's the deal with that game. Um, that's the Game of Thrones, okay? First of all, you know, there's anti-fragility, but there's also happiness. And for my brand, for lifestyle design... I tell guys to chase, you know, to get after their money, to get after their health, uh, to get after fulfillment, but leave power alone. Leave that to other people because, in my opinion, it doesn't lead to happiness. It leads to a lot of anxiety. It leads to a lot of fear. I think you're constantly having to be in survival mode, playing the game of that thrones, you know, even when you have a lot of money. For example, you know, they said that the most dangerous place to be in Soviet Russia during Stalin's time was as close to him as possible. You know, he had the, the chief of the secret police and the chief of the army. Every two years he was killing that guy. And he would use the guy below him to do it. So that he knows if he fucks up even the slightest, it's his head. And, you know, he's not even trusting of his lieutenants. Um, you know, Stown's not trusting of anyone in his inner circle because he's been betrayed so many times. Like, they're that entire inner circle because they live by the sword, die by the sword. Um, it's... it's it's ruled continually by force. They're all living in fear, 
you know, every day they th they're thinking about it could be them next, including Stalin. Um, so they have all this money and all this power, but, but, you know, it's the same thing with like, you know, you're in a prison gang or you're in a gang on the streets, you know, by trying to actually go after power because you think power will give you protection um, against people who are trying to physically hurt you, you actually make yourself much more of a target. Um, like the most likely people to be involved and to be attacked and shot and stabbed are guys that are in gangs or guys that are in the mafia. And it's usually going to be your own people that do it. So ultimately, they're aggressively trying to become anti-fragile by having a lot of power. But now they've got themselves in the Game of Thrones. And now they've created a lot of bad karma. Now they've, they've you know, gone after a lot of people. They've created enemies both within their own circle and, and outside their circle. And more often than not, that catches up with you. Be it you getting shot, you getting stabbed, you going to jail. Um, now, let's say somewhere like America, where they, there's more of a rule of law than, than you know, Stalin's uh, <laughs> Soviet Russia. But, you know, it's still like, you know, Bill Clinton, they tried to impeach him. They're trying to impeach Donald Trump every day. Um, you know, people are constantly being thrown out of offices like their enemies are, are feeding a scandal that they caught them into the press. Um, you know, James Comey, he used to be the head of the FBI. Now he's under investigation. Hillary Clinton's under investigation for, you know, what she did. Um, so, you know, they might not be, you know, might not be an assassination, but it's, there'd be character assassination and there will be, um, you know, legal ramifications like being sued. There will be, um, your opponents are trying to put you into jail. Your opponents are trying to put dirt on you to, to ruin your career. Um, you know, those people are constantly having to be in survival mode. So by, you know. I get why they ch people chase power. I get how it could be seductive, um, but you know, ultimately, what what you're doing is is you're trying to solve where you feel like you're fragile by by pursuing more power. But ultimately, what you do at those levels is you create um, more fragility for yourself. So, of those three, you know, we've got health, we've got money, and we've got um, power, I would say avoid power altogether. Okay. Minimum power that's necessary. And what I mean by that is like, you know, I prefer having a lifestyle business at this point in my career than trying to get like 30 employees in there. Maybe over time, you know, as I get enough money coming in and I might want to flow it back, but ultimately, um, I'm not chasing that power for the sake of power so I can tell people what to do. In fact, I'd prefer not to. I'd prefer just to be able to make a lot more money with like one or two half employees because I'm able to leverage all these different online systems um, instead of having to hire people that do things better um, and, and consistently. And because I'm able, my margins are so high, I'm able to dump so much money back in advertising and, and to things like that. It's so where hopefully I don't need a large staff to be able to to hit my metrics. Um, so I'm not pursuing power for power's sake. I mean, using like the minimum that you need to be able to get to your financial goals. Um, and, and health for sure. You know, you've got to take care of your health is number one. So, so the way to do that is, is, you know, controlling ejaculation, minimizing that as much as possible, removing violent people from your life. Um, moving into making sure that you're in a safe neighborhood, making sure that you only go to safe environments. Um, as much fun as it is to ride a motorcycle in Thailand, like I used to, I'm kind of happy now that I'm not doing that anymore. That was by far the biggest health leak for me. Get the diet under control, which is hit or miss for me. I, I at least make sure that I work out a lot um, and I get enough healthy food in, but I also have probably more cheat meals than I should. Um, so that's super important, getting the health together and all those facets and then get the money together. Okay. First goal, six figures to six figure income, six figures in the bank. If you're already there, next goal is 250 coming in every year. After that, seven figures, 
Um, I don't think you stop until you get to seven figures. I, I feel like, you know, you don't want to put it on cruise control until then. That's my opinion. Uh, especially if you're living in, in North America, you're going to need, need more money than you think. Um, and, you know, when you're doing seven figures and you've, you know, maybe got some property to hedge that currency risk, you know, because who knows where this currency thing's going with Bitcoin and all this other stuff coming up. Um, like you've been able to generate a lot of money. You've got a consistent business. You've got a flywheel where you're being able to reinvest back into it. And then you're able to actually, you know, protect that wealth and hopefully earn some cash flow on it as well. You guys know that I hate the stock market as an ex-trader. I wouldn't give any of my money to Wall Street. Um, you can watch my videos about that. But, you know, it's, it's getting that money and then being able to protect it. I hate real estate as an investment. I hate all investments really, but it's it's more just the idea of that money is no longer on the internet. Okay, I've got an internet business, and all of my you know my wealth is is in these digits. Okay, and that makes me uncomfortable to the point of you know I'm looking at getting over to Miami, start looking at properties. I've been digging through those Grant Cardone. Um, commercial real estate investment deals, at least so I have something physical. I still stand by those two videos and articles I did, by the way, maybe three or four years ago on why you shouldn't buy a house and why you shouldn't invest in real estate. That's for most people because most people are doing it without a property manager. They're buying one single door home at a time. Um, but as a way to protect your wealth, once you're hitting towards that seven figure net worth, um, you know, getting you some commercial real estate, or even though a house is a, is a terrible investment, it's at least out of the banking system. Um, it's out of these digits online. Uh, that's something to consider. Check out my uh, series on how to plan your financial freedom. Also, my stuff on, on wealth protection, both on revolutionarylifestyledesign.com and on my YouTube channel. Um, but if you're not at that level, you know, at least just kind of have a light plan for it. It's like get money, throw it back into a high, high margin business max out the income on that business and then start looking, you know, while keeping a certain amount of savings, of course, and then start looking into how you're going to protect that money um, over the next 30, 30 to 40, 40 years. And ideally being able to get that money um, generating income for you. Like I will never invest, like I'm going to dump the maximum I can into my business, find, find ways to, you know, how do I spend a hundred thousand a month on advertising, get a return. But once you've maxed out the flow in your business, it's, it's like, and you're keeping a certain amount of cash. I'm a big believer in, in investing in, in only assets that produce cash flow. So it'd be bonds, um, which again, I don't like because, you know, your money's still stored in those digits online and it'd be real estate, which is much more of a headache. And I don't like it for different reasons, but you at least have this physical thing that you can live in that's going to exist. You've got insurance on it. Um, you know, like, like my great, great grandfather before my family kind of disintegrated a little bit and, and, um, you know, but the, the, the money he made, like he came over from to Canada from Eastern Europe couldn't sign his name, somehow pulled his, himself up by his bootstrap, signed his name with an X, and bought a bunch of real estate. And that lasted 100 years. Um, after my grandfather died, my family sold that off. I unfortunately didn't get any of it or a taste of it, but such is life. But, but I mean, this is from, from what a man built, you know, close to 100 years ago. And what were they? They were those Grant Cardone multifamily apartments, okay? So that's just a little bit of a financial lesson there. Um, so again, always ending this thing with good news, okay? You can become, there's levels to anti-fragility, okay? But don't kid yourself. Stay away from the power, okay? Stay away from violence. Stay away from anything that's going to get you in trouble with the police. Stay away as much as you can from any type of legal situation, um, for you young guys, especially who are going out to the, you know, the bars or whatever, 
um, or, or, you know, having a lot of girls run through, that's another area where you've got to be very ethical as well as, you know, um, not having relationships w with women who are under the influence of alcohol and things like that, especially if you're in a college, um, you know, and avoiding negative, you know, any, any people that you think could hurt you, surrounding yourself with good people, good environments, good living situation, um, being ruthless with that, you know, cause that's your freedom. And, you know, the, the, especially in like North America, the police are very smart. The long, the long arm of the, of the law is very powerful. You do not want any problems with that. You want to avoid the legal system like the plague, you know, when you blow up your business and you're, and you're worth $15 million, you can take, you can take a lawsuit. It's probably going to happen at some point once you get big enough. Um, but that's okay. Cause that means you're, you're doing really well. I mean, Bill Gates, Bill Gates has been sued a lot. Bill Gates had to testify in Congress cause he was doing so well. Okay. That, that those are high quality problems, but you do not want to get yourself involved in that until you're, you know, no longer a single digit millionaire. Um, and maybe you have to settle and, and swallow your pride. And, you know, you want to be as healthy as possible. Keep working on your health goals every year, getting fitter, getting in better shape, getting your body vibrating more with well being by having like a clean diet, controlling the ejaculation, and, and getting your income up, dude. You know, you need more money than you think. Grant Cardone says if you want to live in California, you need 10 mil. I think he's right. It costs a lot less to live in Eastern Europe where I'm at right now and where I was at before in Thailand. You know, my apartment was $300 a month. I'm paying $1,300 a month now. I'm overpaying. Could probably got it for 900 if I didn't buy a six-month lease on Airbnb. But I don't care. And, but I'm not trying to live like be tight, have, having to be in second and third world countries the rest of my life. And even if I was, you know, I still want to hit all my potential. Um, so don't stop on the money. That's the one area where you, where you, where you need more than you think, because things come up in life and it's, it's something that you can just, you know, you want to massacre that you want to be as anti-fragile as possible. Um, because money provides so much freedom. It provides so much psychological comfort. And I'm not saying to buy, buy a dumb, bunch of dumb shit like Ferraris and stuff. I'm saying buy financial security, buy psychological comfort, um, buy being able to have physical assets that you know can withstand the test of time. Buy the fact that you you know you know you're never gonna have to go back to that bitch ass job and that fucking boss breathing down your neck every day. Um, even if you're far against the wall, you know, far away from the wall like I am. I'm, I mean, that's still a motivator. It's still a motivator to think like, there's no way I'm giving my best, most productive years to that job. I need to be working harder every day than I worked in that job. Okay, because I'm working for myself now. So that's the path. Okay, you want to be as anti-fragile as possible. That's a good thing. But don't get it twisted and, and start thinking like, you're, you're tougher than you are. Pride leads to a fall. You got to analyze the total situation of life, okay? I mean, go watch the comments on these prisons. Like, I, I don't know why I'm fascinated with the prison thing. I'm fascinated with soldiers and war zones because I always think, how would I, would I have been able to survive? Am I tough enough? It's just, it's just kind of mindless entertainment, but it's interesting. Look at the comments of these channels. These guys talking, these internet tough guys talking about what they would have done in prison. You know, like, like you have a choice in a California prison. You got to link up with a, a gang there. You, you know, you got to be willing to stab people. I mean, it's crazy. Okay. Stop pretending you're a tough guy. That's just going to get you in trouble. Recognize where you're fragile are, where you're, where you're actually fragile and, and start plugging up those leaks in your game, man. Plugging up those holes, um, getting the income up, getting your health up and, so ultimately, you're going to be able to maximize the happiness in your life and feel as much love and joy and bliss, um, you know, as possible. And but that means you might have to go through survival mode a bit. You might have to, like, take a dip in your happiness for the next two years to be able to get that out. But you're, you're thinking long term where everyone else is thinking short term. 
um, and thinking that they're more frag, you know, anti-fragile than they actually are until, you know, the cold hard stick of reality hits them in the face and they realize they weren't as tough as they thought they were. Okay, so don't make that mistake. Hope this message finds you well. If you need some help with this, some of this stuff, check me out, revolutionarylifestyledesign.com forward slash coaching for my peak performance coaching. Love to have you involved. If not, please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like the content um, or leave a comment below. Much love.